and thank you very much for watching. So today I failed to do the Algo Daily during challenge during the day. So we'll be doing that tonight. Today is day 16 and um, I just went for those that are wondering at algodaily.com they have a free sign up so they send you a new challenge every day and I'm not associated with them at all I just am trying to see whether I want to purchase their courses or not really so um, hopefully you'll learn something from this and if you do I have more me trying to figure out algorithms on my own and I'm not amazing at these but you know keep on trying Woo. anyway so today is the missing number challenge. We have an unsorted array of random numbers, and we need to know in the lower bound the least number, right? You're told sorted, given a lower bound and an upper bound. One consecutive number is missing, we need to find it. So, this one just seemed really simple, and it depends, I guess, on what your constraints are beyond what is said. So, we'll say, uh, make a new directory, we'll call it, um, missing number, I guess, cd. Missing number, we will go ahead and vi into package. Now, I'm pretty sure um, Algo Daily, they have one of those um, they have an inbuilt like a browser editor that I could use but I find that I'm wanting to go ahead and practice setting this up from scratch. So it doesn't bother me to do this. This is pretty quick. And I started doing VI instead of um, just touching it and going into the thing because I kept forgetting to. Um, I kept forgetting to save it, and then I went to go install Jest, and then uh, you can't install Jest for um, until you know it. There's a um, JSON Jest. Okay, so if I hit Escape and then colon X. We can do that, and now we should be able to install, just save it to dev, and yeah, so if we go here, basically if you don't have the name and the version, or like this has a JSON file with proper curly braces, it won't install the dependencies for Jest, which is annoying. So now we're going to just make a new file called missing number, and then we're going to up arrow and just make a test file too. And the way I'm going to go about this is the simplest way for me because I'm not feeling it tonight. So we're just going to make a function. We're going to call it missing number. We are going to have an array as the input. We're going to do module exports. I always want to do, you know, okay. That's just one of those things that I will always 
doubt myself, is it export modules or is it ex module exports? But I'm pretty sure this is correct. So then we're going to just declare the missing number here, which is not too bad. And then, so this is bringing in an array. And then we're just going to have a test here so finds missing number and this here we'll just have expect missing number to two four six one three seven and then two b five so these are not in order we want the upper and the lower bounds so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are multiple ways to go about this. You could just you can create an array from uh, the upper and lower bounds. I think this is the the way the easiest way is just to do a for loop with the, um, we have an, the array and then we have the upper bound, lower bound, and then here we can have one and seven, right? So if we just have a simple for loop, we are going to let i equals the why would I do upper bound and lower lower bound upper bound right yeah so equals lower bound i is i is less than upper bound plus one i plus plus and then the easiest way to do this if not r dot includes i return i and then just do return no otherwise okay npm run test and it, it just worked so if this is not an option here like it, they don't want you to do it includes we could do say we can do if r dot index of i is equal to two negative one then return i this will also work. I declare. Okay. Now, what if they literally they just don't want us to do any like index of or includes? That makes this this problem more interesting. And by they, I mean the whatever employer we are pretending will do uh, need 
is making you do this for a tech interview. So what I would say is if we're not, if we can't use any of the um, pre-built in functions for arrays, what we can do is actually just declare a new array, right? Const um, what is it? This will be like bound numbers equals this and then we'll just say bound nums dot push i and then we can do we don't okay where was I going with this then so this here will have all of the numbers from the bound upper and the lower bound so now I think we can basically just do return bound nums uh, minus array and this might fail that's not a num so Mm, okay. Here's something that we could probably do. I'm pretty sure there is a way to subtract an array from an array. What we can do is say um, array dot reduce. Um, let's see if I can get the reduce correct. Accumulator current. I always get these mixed up too, but we can say return accumulator plus current zero, and we'll just do a const log. Okay, const um, We'll just make our array some. <sighs> of course, doing the reduce. Okay. Is also using a. An inbuilt function, so I'm unsure if uh, this is. So we could do bound nums reduce, and then we could do array sum minus bound sum. And did I not spell that the same? Okay. And then that should return the correct number. Unless I did those different, it should be uh, minus. So we could do instead of a reduce, we could just do two for loops to create the value. This is getting very messy. Let me new file reduce missing number. We'll just do a new function reduce missing number. 
we will just copy this whole thing. We'll just call this reduce the same number. We can just use the same test because I'm lazy. The same number. Okay, there's a reason why. There you go. Just copy this. Actually, we'll copy this whole test, right? What did I copy? here and that way we can just have this information this will test it out okay now why don't we just create a new file and we'll call this to some missing number and then we'll just do this from scratch right more you do this from scratch, the easier it'll be. Some missing number. And then we'll have an array. We'll have a lower bound. Then we'll have an upper bound. We will then module export to some missing number, we'll have a for loop. Let i equal So what I want to do here i equal to zero then i is less than array length and then we'll increase i and we'll then do we will declare two different variables. We'll do let array count let found count equals zero. I think we can just do a comma. We'll try that. We might need to just deconstruct that. But what I want to do basically is do our array count equals array count plus array i. And then in the same breath, we can do bound count equals bound count plus. I plus lower bound and then before this we can say if uh, I is if I is greater than or equal to is greater than upper bound, we will return no. 
so then I'm going to assume that if we can do we can do return we can do bound count minus array count and that'll be that so then we can do equals require to some missing number we'll test that again and then just copy that here and then let's see if we can do three for three right off the bat no okay it is not a number so it might actually just be this let and let's see if this comes out Okay, so we received negative two. Which is odd. We'll do console log array count and then bound count. So this is 23, and this is 21. Such odd. Let's do here. We can do a console log. Uh, some. So the array count is 23, which is what we're looking for. It's the bound count that is wrong. Okay. So what I assumed here, um, console log i plus lower band and then console log uh, also why that should not be uppercase Excuse me for a moment while I learn how to spell. Okay, so console log this one time at bound count. Sorry, I had to. Okay, so Yes, that's that's why. So we have I should be getting to seven. So upper bound is seven, so I swear this is going to pass, but it's going to be stupid. Huh. 
Let me get rid of... So this is supposed to be 28 and Okay, so I think it was just failing on the fact that I didn't know how to spell. That's not what I intended. Why didn't I intend that? Because... There you go. Okay. So the bound count is up the uh, an upper bound because the length is um seven. What is the length number? We're just going to assume that, that the bound covers the length. But basically the fact that the length won't cover the like it won't iterate over the upper bound. So because there's one missing number. So the this length is one less than what the upper bound would be. This makes sense. I got rid of something important. Hold on a second. Yes. It would be helpful if you didn't do that. Okay. Because the array is missing one care one element it will be one less than the bound range so if we put the upper bound as the initial bound count and then we just add the index value to the lower bound we should wind up with a number that is the correct number of the sequence then we can just subtract the larger number from the smaller number and we will get the correct number. So I think out of all of these, this is the one, this and, and the original one, which is either of these would be okay. So basically if it includes it, this is an unsquared array, so it just the efficiency of this depends on how quickly it doesn't include one of these or has an index. I don't know if there's one of these or the other is more um, or less. Um, efficient. So either includes i, not includes i, or index is negative one, and this is just the fallback that you use. And then for the reduce, this one's interesting. So what you could do is just, we actually don't need this for loop. 
what you could do is probably figure out how to do an index here and basically do um, the current is um, okay I'm not making sense basically if we don't have these this is bound nums we could do um, const Found some equals array from length is upper bound minus lower bound. Uh, this goes into a semicolon, uh, not semicolon, curly braces. Then we can do the reduce like we would have, except that the current would be plus lower bound. That might work. We'll see. Do we still work? No. This is supposed to be five, and now it is no number. Const bound link equals I'm pretty sure it's just the fact that I didn't do bounds on correctly. It helps if you do console log correctly. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So it's returning not a number. The bound sum is also not a number. So what did I do? Let's see. What is this array doing? Oh, so it is undefined. Okay, that is decidedly weird. Okay. Pretty sure it's supposed to be 28. So, yeah. And then this, it doesn't matter if that's on two lines. Can I explain myself now? Okay, so if you're very, very insistent on only using reduce, we summed the array that was given and then we got the 
basically the range, the difference between upper and lower bound, and we added it by one so that when we did the array length, it would actually give us the array range that we needed. And then we added the current index and the lower bound together to uh, make sure that it's the correct number that it was summing or reducing really and then we subtracted the two numbers to get them to be the same thing so I've solved this in like five different ways I think we can say that today's exercise is totally complete now let's go to the solution that they have oh I should also actually just copy this here, put it in the test, and then expect here, and then array. lower bound, upper bound, to be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to be 8. I think. Pretty sure that's what I saw. Okay. That's good. What should we test? Okay, so what do we need to know? See, I am 16 days into the trial, but it would have been nice if up to day 14 we could have gotten free materials because I'm curious how do I compare to what the, the real answer is but either way I, I really enjoyed solving this challenge I think that if I was given this in a tech interview I would be able to solve it in at least one way off the top of my head unless I totally you know uh, blinked out on how to write JavaScript but yeah this can be very simple in a for loop you can do some weird reduce thing if you don't want to use the, you know, index of stuff. But I think that this shows that summing the two numbers is basically not using any inbuilt functions, but understanding how this works. So to me, I feel like this would be the best answer of the night. Anyway, I've been rambling on for quite a bit, so I hope that if you're watching this, you find this helpful and you'll like and subscribe and keep on watching my, my foray into daily algorithms. Thank you. Bye.